This is me, The Ended Viking, and this is Big Bang. Big Bang is a, bear with me, a tile laying game with a rondelle timing mechanism where you have to put puzzle together a board uh, where you are creating the universe after the Big Bang. Um, each player is going to have secret scoring uh, parameters that they have to follow that are theirs and theirs alone, and the other players can try to deduce those and try to block them. It is a lot of fun. It has two different versions of the game, kind of like a simpler... Uh, I, I hate using the word simple because I don't think this game is simple, but uh, a, a less condensed, I guess, rule set uh, for families, and also uh, has a, a more uh, like complex game, I guess, uh, for uh, gaming groups or, or veteran gamers. So let let me show you how the game is played. It is an awesome, fun little game, and then we'll uh, talk about it more uh, when I come back here. All right, so I've set up the old Big Bang game here with uh, four players. Uh, all four people have their tokens on the zero mark on this uh, celestial clock, if you will. And uh, you're going to be, depending upon which tile you choose, uh, you're going to like move forward on that clock and then wait for uh, time to catch up with you, and then you get to take your turn. Um, people that have played these timing mechanisms in like, Krochwagen or Glenmore or Thebes, uh, you'll be pretty uh, familiar with that. All right, so each player at the beginning of the game is just going to choose. They're going to have one of these cards that's going to denote uh, which element they are. That's just, you keep that in front of you so everybody knows uh, which token is yours that's on that rondel or what have you that's up there. And then uh, each person will get secretly. They will get one of these cards that tells you what color that they're going to score at the end of the game. So then you have this, you peek at it, and you don't show that to anybody else. And then you're going to get one of these, which is the different celestial bodies that you have. And so you're going to see, at the end of the game, you want to get three consecutive of either the color or the celestial body. And you can score either. And so you, you won't be able to determine that until obviously the end of the game. But uh, let me show you how that works. All right, so you have this big stack of tiles, and you're going to set up four of them like so. And no matter what, on your turn, you're going to pick one tile to place. And depending upon the tile you pick, you'll move forward on the clock. I'll explain that in just a second. And then whichever is the furthest tile to the right will be discarded. Now, you get, you're going to play all the tiles, mind you, but you have to discard one. So, I found that kind of interesting. Usually, like, if you take this one, a lot of games, you just slide everything one over, and then you put it down. But no, if you would take this and place it, you would discard this tile. And, and so then you would place this one. Now, the very first turn of the game, you're going to start with this big bang tile right in the middle. And the very first turn of the game, when you place your first tile down... It doesn't have to be close to two hexes. But after the first first tile gets placed, the next tile has to be adjacent to two hexes. And it has to match both hexes in some way, either the color or the celestial body. Now, the Big Bang is wild, so you don't really have to worry about that, but later on you can see where that might get tricky. All right, so if somebody, so if, if green here, Earth, the Earth player, chose this particular tile, um, there, depending upon the background of the tile, that will tell you how many uh, steps forward you have to go. If you look at this little chart here, which is just a representation of that board that's over there, um, here's the numbers, obviously. So you move forward one, two, or three spots on the dial, depending on if it's just black on the background, stars in the background, or a galaxy in the background. Now, the reason for that is that um, these are going to be worth one point if they are part of your chain that you're scoring. These are going to be worth two, and these are going to be worth three. So it's kind of easy to remember. Now, these tiles down here are special tiles that I'm going to show you how those work here towards the end uh, but mind you if you play one of these tiles you're going to move ahead four if you play one of these tiles you're going to move ahead five and i'll talk about those in just a few moments but uh this this is kind of handy to have obviously but but you know having that board right there is pretty easy for people to remember so in this case the first player chose one of the stars in the background so they're going to move ahead two like so then they're going to take these two tiles they're going to move them over to the right like that take the top tile and put it down, and take the next tile, and put it down. All right, so then the next player is going to go and do the exact same thing. Now, I should mention that, as I said, 
these tiles are going to get used eventually. You stack them up face up and then after it's done, you don't shuffle them up. You just turn the whole tile over and you and you start over. So it's one of those things where like, I guess if people can remember kind of maybe where the tiles were, the tiles they got left behind, uh, they might have a shot at remembering, you know, what tile is going to come up next. All right, so the next person is gonna go and so they have to match. And so like, let's say they take this one, all they have to do is match the red because they're gonna go like this. It's adjacent to two tiles and then they're gonna have to move ahead three like so and so we're going to take this one discard it take this tile move it all the way down here take this tile, move it all the way down here and so forth now as the game progresses what's going to happen is other people are going to kind of start to realize like hmm you know they're playing a lot of like red tiles or yellow tiles and maybe that's their color so or they're trying to figure out hmm they seem to be playing a lot of planet tiles or what have you that's the one that they're trying to score as well. Now, I you know, so you can try to discern, you know, what their secret, you know, uh, scoring uh, matchups are as well. But for the most part, you're going to want to try to take the tiles that match up with what you have to try to do the best job that you can. Now, so in this case, the next player could take this tile right here, and it's yellow, and they could place it here because of the fact that this matches up with that, and so that would only move them ahead one. But this person we still get to go. Let's go ahead and get rid of this tile, move that down, move that down, and let's replace the two that are available. So now we got a blue one and a yellow planet. So let's, for the sake of sake of an argument, let's say uh, this the, the water actually is yellow and actually is planets. And they're like, that's perfect, awesome. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one. Oh, wait, no, I'm gonna say purple, uh, orange and planets. They're gonna to wanna to take this one, right? And so, but they, they need to find a good spot for it. And they can't because there's no other planets out there. So now they're gonna to have to build up what they have. So, all right, well, planets are still what they need. So they're gonna go ahead and place this one down like that. So then it's matched up. So now that you can see where it's going to get, kind of get tricky, where you, you have situations where you want to place a tile, but you can't because there isn't anything out there that matches up, which is one of the cool puzzle factors of this game. Um, in the really rare occurrence that all four of them, there are no spots that you can place anything down, you just take all four, put them on the, the discard pile, and deal out four new tiles. But that hasn't happened in any game I've played, so, but I'm not worried. So now, unfortunately, womp womp, um, you know, Blue has to watch their perfect tile go away, but remember, they get it's going to circle around again, right? And they're going to be able to score that. So let's go ahead and place a couple more down, like that. And then remember, they picked one that had a galaxy, so they're going to move ahead. One, two, three. All right. I'm just going to do a couple more turns here, and then I'm going to show you how scoring works. Uh, so let's go ahead, and now we're looking for things we can match up. Here we go. We can match up. This one matches up. It's red, so it could match up with both of those. Um, it could go there, obviously. But let's just go ahead and... Actually, because you, you remember, like... You, now, this would be wonderful if you could do that, right? Because then, if you were red, you'd have those three uh, matched up. So that wouldn't work. And then, oh, man, this would have been perfect if it could, like, fit in there. But, you know, if you if you have the red color, we can go ahead and place it like so. And that's a star. So we're going to move ahead two. And now we get rid of this one. Move those two down. Oh, a sun and an orange. All right, so green, hmm, what should green do? Now, here's a cool thing. So like, you notice how these are all stacked up like so? So if green were to go and place something that had a blank background, like this right here. So he took this one and placed it here, which is a completely valid move because of the fact that it matches up with the, the little asteroids and these match up with red, and it actually matches up asteroids as well. Green would go on top of the stack like that. Whichever one, and being, the stack is important in this game because whoever is on the top of the stack gets to go next. So green would get two turns in a row. So if he, they had a situation where they had a perfect combination of, of things that they could have, you know, looped together, then, you know, he, you know, that was an option or that's something they could possibly do. And I'm looking at this and so like the only, the, this is kind of neat. So look just, and I'll, and I'll go to scoring here in a second, but look at this. So he can't place the planet, right? Because the planet wouldn't, if he placed it here, 
it wouldn't match up with that color and so you can't place it you know you and you have to place it next to two and you couldn't place it here because it doesn't match up with color or the type there isn't hasn't been a sun uh, placed out there yet so whoever got that card is like really infuriated at this point because they haven't been able to put any suns down once again the planet's not going to work the only tile that possibly can work is this one by placing it right there because of the fact that you're matching up the comet with those two and you know he might not want to have had taken a, an action that moves ahead three one two three like that but it was the only tile available to him that he could actually do in that situation and so we discard that one move it down move it down place and Place. All right, so you should have a pretty good idea of how that is going to work as you play the game. One of the things that's kind of infuriating about this game is, and, and infuriating in a good way, I mind you, like when you're trying to figure out how to score your points, is that you know, like you get a car, you get something like this, and you're like, oh man, I totally have asteroids. If I could just get these three asteroids lined up, that would be perfect. Or if I could line them up like this, that'd be perfect. But no, because you have to end up placing them like that right because and you since it has to be in a straight line of those things matched up together that's not going to work so it's it's one of those things i really like about the game is the puzzle that the that the turn presents to you where you need to figure those things out and i really enjoy that aspect and the fact that it forces you to make moves that might not help you at all but you have to do it because it's the only tile that will fit in that situation all right so i'm going to cheat a little bit i'm just going to set up how scoring works and, and just use some tiles here. Uh, but let's say you were lucky enough to have red and asteroids. Okay, so like, and you can probably see what I'm doing here. So let's say, and then we had a situation like this. And um, actually, let's go like this and like that. All right. So. And, like, this wouldn't be the end of the game, obviously, because there's going to be a ton of other tiles over there. But if you had red and the asteroids, and, like, the game has hands, as I said, when all the tiles get placed, your red would score 1, 2, 3, because you put 3 together, right? And so you would score 1 point for this, 2 points for that, and 3 points for that, because this is a galaxy for 3, stars for 2, and 1. So that would score you 6 points. And then if you were scoring the asteroids, you would score two for this, two for this, and one for that. And that would score you five. And so that's how those scoring things, you know, put together. You, you go by the background of what's on there to score the points. So, uh, you know, and as I said, the board's going to be a lot bigger once you get, uh, once you, you place all of these tiles. And like, remember, when you, when you get done with the discard, you actually take all these and you flip them over. You know, after all these would have been placed, you just, you, you flip them and then you turn over so you don't mix those up. But once you get all the tiles down, that's when you score and you see who won the game. All right, so there's some special tiles and I told you I was gonna talk to you about those. All right, so I've gone ahead and kind of messed the, the board a little bit, but here is an earth tile. So the earth tile is kind of a wild card tile and can be placed anywhere. And so you notice how this would normally be nearly, impo probably impossible uh, to, to get this in because there'd be nothing there. But an earth tile would be able to fit in that location. And if you can score the earth tile, it's worth uh, one point at the end of the game. Um, there are these tiles, which are like wormhole tiles and allow you to kind of distort things and do, you can, like if you placed one, if these were placed like so, you could actually score uh, these suns, if you had suns, because you could go one, two, go through the wormhole, and three. And I should mention that, like, um, you, if, like, here, let me actually, like, like, let's say the, this was, uh, that, that isn't exactly legal, but just for, just to show you, like, it doesn't have to follow the same direction. So one, two, three, and then this one goes in a different direction. So the wormhole, like, it, it distorts time and space, as you know. So actually, let me, here, let me do this. Put that there. And put that there. So you can go one, two, and then three. That would be able to be a scoring pattern because of the wormhole that was in that location. Um, you have a uh, you have you have uh, black holes. If you place a black hole on the board, it immediately destroys uh, the things, and you flip over the tiles that it's next to. If you place uh, anything next to a black hole, you can, you can if you want to, but it immediately destroys those tiles if, if, if they get placed there. 
This is a hyperspace tile. A hyperspace tile, if you play it, it allows you to take um, a, a thing that is in a, in a location and move it to as long as to another valid location. So you could take that comet and move it over there if you wanted to. And that's what the hyperspace tile. Note the hyperspace tile doesn't go on the board, it just is a tile you play and use it for a special ability. This is an eclipse tile. Uh, an eclipse tile allows you to take another uh, another tile and place it over the top of another one that is in existence as long as it is uh, legally placed. Um, but so, and then you just, and you don't ever like, the hidden tile remains hidden uh, for the rest of the game. So if you wanted to, you could remove it, uh, but then you don't want, might not want to do that because it might end up in the discards and you only really can't, can't play it. Um, there's an orbit tile that allows you to take a tile and move it along an orbit to another location uh, uh, that that matches or where it can fit, uh, like on the, on the other board. This is a dark energy tile that when you use it, it allows you to break the rules and actually, you take two turns in a row and it allows you to actually break the rules and actually place something that's like next to, it has to like, it doesn't have to be next to two tiles anymore. You can place uh, something that it would be a legal move. And finally, if you place the supernova, it allows you to take an extra turn. And after the supernova is placed on the board, if anybody else or the other player places a tile next to the supernova, they get an extra turn as well. And so those tiles, if you want to add them, you can. Um, you know, they do say that the like the other like if you don't play without them, it's more of a family friendly version. Uh, and 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 I guess I can see that. But I don't think the the new tiles really add too much complexity to the game. And I really uh, enjoyed having them in it just because of the extra options that you'd have but when I did play with my son and my daughter I did leave those out just to kind of make the game uh, more uh, simple I guess but I, I don't really consider the game simple though because wrapping your head around trying to put these tiles in the right places and being able to score them is really tough so anyway I really enjoyed this. This is a wonderful uh, uh, like mix of different mechanisms that I enjoy and a really, really fresh new way of approaching it. But let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts. Is Big Bang. All right, so uh, tile land games, you know, there's, there's, been, there's lots of them, right? And we've all probably played one or two in our day. Um, and there is something so wonderfully uh, simple and sweet about the beloved hexagon, how it hooks together. And, you know, and I find like, yeah, I mean, there's tile land games with like squares and triangles or whatever, but I, I've always loved the hexagon because of the fact that, well, it calls back to my wargaming uh, young youth and also uh, d d overland combat type of things. Uh, but it, it adds a complexity, right? Like as I was talking, because you have to have a straight line for the scoring. The trick is like trying to get that straight line of the stuff that you need to score. And I really like the, the, the secret scoring uh, aspect. Now, when I played uh, with my son, because he's five, um, we played with, with open information, right? Everybody uh, got to see what everybody had. So you know, I could help him out, like, trying to make sure that, like, you know, he was placing the tile in the right spot and what have you. And, uh, but, and, and you could play with open information, I suppose, but I would, I would suggest that if you play with open information, you would do it without any of the, like, kind of screw each other uh, tiles. Like, you know, so, like, if you saw somebody was scoring a bunch of points, you don't just get to put the black hole down and destroy it, that sort of thing. So, but, um, you know, regardless, the game's fun, right? Uh, I, I love games like this because I like seeing what I've created after the after everything is done. Um, the scoring can be a little tricky because as you're trying to search for your little like little, little spot of uh, where you score your points, um, I do always suggest that like each person score it, uh, like everybody scores the game. Uh, like you you do it for everybody's turn, right? You like so because there's been lots of games where it's like. Well, okay, I, I scored, you know, 19 points. And, and it's just like, then all of a sudden you're like putting away, it's like, wait, did you score these three right here? And like, oh, gosh, I didn't see those, right? So, you know, if everybody's looking at the board and like looking for like, okay, you look for asteroids and you look for yellow. Okay, let's, let's stare at this and, and figure out, um, especially with that wormhole thing because that can really uh, mess things up as well but it's one of those wonderful little you know, like brain burny things as well that I really enjoy I, I like that 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 feeling of you know the, the the game like 
even even the scoring of it is challenging as well. And and I found this game to be really highly competitive. And and and, and you know usually Thailand games are, in my opinion, they tend to be on the lighter side of, of the gaming spectrum for me. Uh, but this one was very delightful uh, in the fact that it, it was a. a, a fairly serious challenge and and i went into it thinking you know because you you see this you see the colors you see the shapes you're like oh hmm, whatever and then like you get into it and you're like oh jeez you know like you you know it reminded me a little bit of oh man what is i can't remember i remember like, an abstract game that had some tiles i can't remember the name of it right now that, that, that really surprised me uh with with its complexity and its difficulty as well but i really i like the theme uh you know obviously it could theme could have been anything but i did like the theme i like i like the whole idea of creating the galaxy and the idea that you're expanding away from the big bang that's cool right so so there you go if this is your genre of game um if you like these tile lane games like these puzzles that you put together um i really strongly suggest this one this this uh this really hit uh for my family uh, for my mother and myself and, and my wife and my daughter and my son. It really, really hit well for us, and, and we really enjoyed it. And I liked the timing thing. I thought that was co totally cool, how, like, you know, yeah, okay, that's worth three points, but now I don't get to do anything for a while. I, I really liked that. I thought that was neat. So um, there you go. Big bang. If you have any questions about it, uh, ask away. I'll be happy to answer those as best as I can. Uh, as always, thank you very much for your time, and until next time, have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, bye-bye.